As we start module 8, we encounter our first non-gram staining bacteria. Well, that's not completely true. The mycobacterium genus can stain weakly gram negative, but sometimes a weak stain is not much better than no stain at all. In order to visualize this genus under the microscope, a special stain needed to be implemented. The acid fast stain was needed to overcome the bacteria's waxy and gram stain resisting cell membrane. Though all staining procedures are somewhat similar, this type of stain is able to stick to the mycolic acid within mycobacteria membranes. The actual details are pretty low yield, but it may be worth noting that AFB have a lipid-filled mycolic acid layer. Within the mycobacterium genus, there are three species that we will focus on, M. tuberculosis, M. leprae, and a grouping of non-tuberculose mycobacterium. With Mycobacterium tuberculosis, we have the historically significant and still lethal tuberculosis disease. Actually, along with the plague discussed with Yersinia pestis, M. tuberculosis is probably the bug of most historic significance. It has killed, inspired, confounded, and in more recent times, evaded. It was named the consumption for hundreds of years because it was said to consume the body. In modern media reflecting past decades and centuries, Infected individuals are often shown to cough blood into a handkerchief, signaling their demise. Though this still happens, the disease has evolved much in recent decades. In many nations, such as America, all healthcare personnel must be screened annually or every other year. Though a vaccine does exist, complicated reasons prevent it from being widely used in developed nations. That will be explained more in the third tier of this module. Tuberculosis is the name of the lung infiltration of these very small and airborne bacteria. However, lung disease isn't the only concern. POTS disease occurs when bacteria disseminate to the vertebrae. This leads to arthritis and osteomyelitis of the infected bone and can be very difficult to treat. These bacteria may also disseminate to the lymph nodes, then to the meninges, causing TB meningitis. This sequelae can be rapidly fatal. We previously mentioned several similar sounding skin conditions. Erythema nodosum is one that may be associated with TB. It causes painful red nodules that are most often seen in the shins and calves. Despite our best science, this disease still affects 25% of the world's population. There are nearly 10,000 new cases reported in the US each year, an estimated 10 to 11 million worldwide. Our next genus to speak about is M. leprae. Mycobacterium leprae is a pathogen of the disease most Westerners associate with ancient biblical stories of Lazarus, leprosy. In fact, there are still leper colonies in existence to this day. This disease, also known as Hansen's disease, is curable today, unlike in the past. However, it is often so visually disfiguring and socially stigmatized that those previously infected may still isolate themselves. As of 2015, there were still six patients in a Hawaiian leper colony despite being cured of the disease. It is actually still possible to be infected with M. leprae to this day, with the armadillo being the most common vector in America. What is often unknown is that there are two forms of leprosy, lepromatous and tuberculoid. It is thought that different immune functions play a role in the two subtypes. Though lepromatous leprosy causes the more known disfiguring full thickness bilateral skin lesions and anesthesia of the infected areas, tuberculoid is mild by comparison and may display few lesions. A healthy immune system may play a role in which presentation dominates. And for our last section in this tier, there is not an individual bug but a grouping to discuss. This group is often termed Mycobacterium avium complex or Mycobacterium avium intracellulare. This is a subgroup within the larger grouping of non-tuberculous Mycobacterium or NTM. However, if you hear the term MAC, we are often concerned with only two diseases. The first is a respiratory infection. It is TB-like. In practice, it can be difficult to distinguish between MAC and TB. Similar to TB, these bacteria may also disseminate to other parts of the body, in general, MAC is pretty low yield in comparison to TB and would likely only be a choice if tuberculosis was not listed. There are other non-MACs in the NTM group as well. These two are pretty infrequently tested on and rare in most patient populations. There's really just one takeaway for each. And Marinum would be thought for someone that works in a pet store or is a commercial aquarium cleaner. Something involving fish should hint towards this bug. 
M. ulcerans and M. kansasiae have been associated with skin granulomas. Many types of mycobacterium are found in fresh and salt water, which may be why these are also associated with water. Classically, they cause a swimming pool granuloma. M. scrofulaceum is a cause of a very strange sounding disease, scrofula. This is a swelling of lymph nodes in the neck, but it can also be seen in TB. For all the random factoids in this tier, there are really only a few commonly tested on points and clinical presentations. A better understanding of the limitations in testing and treatment will be discussed in future tiers as well. For now, the more that you can remember about TB, the better. It is still a concern in developed nations, due in part to HIV AIDS patients, which is also a growing concern with the current opioid epidemic. The rest of these are very rare, even in specialist settings like pulmonology and infectious disease, so don't stress if they aren't as easy to remember. I'll see you in the next tier to review some of the possible disease presentations.